The premature deterioration of reinforced concrete structures is a heavy burden for a society. In order to manage structures effectively and to reduce this burden to the minimum, the number and extent of interventions have to be kept to the lowest possible level, with only preventative maintenance. The first on-site application of UHPFRC was done on October 22nd. The prefabricated UHPFRC curb, together with the new reinforced concrete beam, was connected to the existing structure after removing the damaged downstream curb. The end part of the upper surface of the new curb was notched to improve the anchorage capabilities of the cast-in-place UHPFRC overlay. The upper surface of the prefabricated UHPFRC curb was made rough by casting vertically against a rough concrete surface at the prefabrication plant. The upper surface of the bridge deck downstream was hydrojetted to remove chloride-contaminated concrete and provide a rough surface for the application of the UHPFRC overlay. The connection of the two segments of the prefabricated UHPFRC curb is ready for being filled with UHPFRC. Two different recipes of the UHPFRC Semtech multiscale were used with similar components. Cement SEM1 52.5, microsilica, fine sand with a maximal diameter of 0.5 mm and super plasticizer. The microsilica cement ratio was 0.26 in mass and the super plasticizer cement ratio was 3.3% in mass. The reinforcement of the ultra compact mattresses was provided by a mix of microfibers, steel wool and macrofibers. 10 mm length aspect ratio 50 with a total dosage of 706 kg per cubic meter 9% volumetric This material originally developed at LCPC in Paris was specially tailored for this application at MCS Recipe CM22 more liquid had 1410 kg per cubic meter cement and a water binder ratio of 0.131. It was used to rehabilitate the upstream curb. Recipe CM23 was designed with 1434 kg per cubic meter cement and a lower water binder ratio of 0.125 to guarantee a tolerance to a slope of the substrate of 2.5%. This material was used for the prefabricated downstream curb and for the watertight overlays on the bridge deck. The UHPFRC was prepared at a concrete prefabrication plant close to the site with a standard mixer of 750 liters capacity. All components except the macro steel fibers were dry mixed for three minutes before the addition of the water and super plasticizer. The transition from a dry to a fluid state of the matrix occurred within one to two minutes, despite the very low water binder ratio of the material. It is shown here in real time, just after the introduction of the water and superplasticizer. The macrofibers were added in two steps and mixed for 30 seconds until a uniform distribution was obtained.
The overall performance of the plant mixer was excellent and fast. The average production time for a 300 liters batch of UHPFRC was 8 minutes. Three batches of 300 liters each were produced consecutively, stored in a concrete truck and then brought to the site. It is worth mentioning that 900 liters of the UHPFRC used for this application represent 635 kilograms steel in the drum of the concrete truck. The transport time from the plant to the site was 15 minutes. Preliminary tests realized in the plant had demonstrated that no significant loss of workability occurred one hour after the contact water binders. The material was poured directly from the truck and applied on the hydrojetted bridge deck with no vibration. It was indeed the very first time that UHPFRC of the Semtec multiscale family were cast in situ and applied for the rehabilitation of a bridge. The Semtec multiscale was easy to produce and place with standard tools and very robust and tolerant to the unavoidable uncertainties of the site. It could be applied quickly with a homogeneous thickness. After nine batches in the plant and three deliveries on the site, the casting of the UHPFRC overlay on the downstream side of the bridge deck was terminated as planned before midday. The use of high performance materials does not exempt from applying a suitable curing at the contrary. UHPFRC are very prone to self-desiccation at early age and require a moist curing of eight days to develop the full potential of their excellent properties. The UHPFRC overlay on the half upstream bridge deck was cast and cured in a similar way. Shortly after, the upstream curb was hydrojetted and prepared for the rehabilitation with a 3 cm layer of UHPFRC CM22. The works were realized with ongoing traffic on the downstream side of the bridge. The concrete truck delivered the UHPFRC directly into the formwork. The low external temperature, around 3 degrees Celsius, made the UHPFRC stiffer than expected. However, after proper steering and with the help of hammer blows, the material could easily find its way into the formwork. When stirred with a tool, the UHPFRC demonstrates its tixotropic behavior. The filling of 10 meter length of hydrojetted curb with an average thickness of 3 centimeters of UHPFRC took only 30 minutes. Air permeability tests performed on site before the application of the bituminous pavement confirmed the extremely low permeability KT of the material cast on the bridge deck. Similar tests were also performed on the lateral surfaces of the two curbs. Uniaxial tensile tests were performed at 28 days in the laboratory on unnunched dog bone specimens cast on site with the material CM23. The tensile response of the UHPFRC is characterized by a high tensile strength, a significant strain hardening domain with multiple cracking and localization in one single crack after the peak force. The test results delivered, as expected, remarkable average properties. Maximum tensile strength of 13.5 MPa and a maximum deformation in the strain hardening domain of 1.5 per thousand with a low scatter. On the fracted surface of the UHPFRC after the tensile test, one can notice the numerous and evenly distributed pulled out steel fibers. A first a posteriori analysis of the construction costs showed that the rehabilitation with UHPFRC and no waterproofing membrane was 12% more expensive than a more traditional solution 
with waterproofing membrane and rehabilitation mortar. However, in the later case, the duration of the site would be largely increased by the drying period, up to three weeks, of the rehabilitation mortar prior to the application of the waterproofing membrane. Besides the intrinsic benefits associated with the outstanding properties of UHPFRC, this innovative rehabilitation technique simplifies the construction process, saving money and reducing time of intervention. Thanks to the extremely low permeability of the UHPFRC, no waterproofing membrane is needed. The fresh material is self-compacting and the thickness of the bituminous concrete can be reduced to a minimum. After one winter season, an inspection of the bridge showed expected corrosion spots on the exposed surfaces of the curbs, with very significant differences depending on the type of formwork used. The downstream prefabricated curb, cast in the plant in a metal formwork, showed the most regular color markings of corrosion. Although a purely superficial and aesthetical concern, it is desirable to mitigate to the largest extent these surface markings. Further research is ongoing on this topic. From the owner's point of view, the main advantages of this technique are shortening of duration of works, quicker reopening of traffic lanes and longer durability, significant savings in terms of reduced traffic disturbances and associated indirect costs, reduction of rehabilitation layer thickness and capacity to reinforce without increasing dead weight, prevent costly reinforcement of main parts of the structure, application by local contractors with standard equipments. This full-scale realization in realistic site conditions clearly demonstrates that the technology of UHPFRC is now mature for cast-in-situ applications of rehabilitation and the required properties of the UHPFRC were achieved with standard equipment and verified in situ.